Good evening, everyone, and welcome to St. Francis Community of Faith for All People, an alternative, inclusive Catholic community. We welcome everyone to our, East, our vigil mass um, on Saturday evening at 5 p.m., which also goes for your Sunday liturgy. Tonight, Reverend Kathleen will be our presider. And if you would like to receive the Eucharist, please get some bread, wine, or grape juice. And when Kathleen blesses um, the elements, all of the elements will be blessed so that you too can receive communion. Let's pray that each one of us will be open to God's spirit as Kathleen leads us in prayer this evening. Okay. Blessed be God, Mother, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. John, please lead us in the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world and mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts your greatest gift, which is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which lives is accounted dead before you. I'm sorry, without which whoever lives is accounted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the a book of Genesis. <clears throat> Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and a lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have 
will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm response is, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord, the Lord is, is kind and, and merciful. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is Mercy. kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquity, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The, the Lord, Lord is kind, kind and, and merciful. merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. <clears throat> Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord, the Lord is kind, is kind and, and merciful. merciful. <clears throat> as far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The, the Lord, Lord is kind and merciful. Today's second reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. <clears throat> So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is, what is sown is perishable. What is weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown, it is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual one. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical and the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven, as was the man of dust. So are those who are of the dust. And as it is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood, blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Alleluia. Alleluia. I give a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, off the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. 
And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners those who love those who love them. If you do good to those who good to, to good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your father, mother is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. All right, I put down my flipboard here. I actually referred to this, some one of these stories a couple of weeks ago when uh, Ken had the mask. So um, <clears throat> I didn't realize that day that I was gonna be preaching on it today. We know that the synoptic gospels tell many of the same stories. Uh, perhaps some of you have seen the, the cartoon where the teacher says, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, I'd like to see you after class. Your book reports are suspiciously alike. But we sometimes learn from one evangelist a detail that the others don't give us that makes all the difference in the world. You know, for example, the infamous story is the feeding of the more than 5,000 where Matthew adds the detail, not counting women and children, which tells us that even when women and children were there, they didn't count. Okay, I will get off that soapbox very quickly. But so with regard to today's gospel, Matthew's version adds the detail. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, now everybody pay attention to which one of your cheeks is the right cheek. Why the right cheek? Because a blow by the right fist in that right-handed world would land on the left cheek. An opened hand slap would also land on the left cheek. To hit the right cheek with a fist, that right-handed person would land on the left cheek of the opponent. An open hand slap would also slap the left cheek. To hit the right cheek would require using the left hand. But in that society, the left hand was used for only unclean tasks to um, just say it as politely as one can, 
2,000 years ago, they did not have toilet paper. So in some communities, even to gesture with the left hand carried a penalty of penance in the quorum community where, you know, they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. So the only way one could strike the right cheek with the right hand would be the back of the hand. So that tells us that we are dealing here with insult, not a fist fight. The intention is clearly not to injure, but to humiliate, to put someone in his or her place. A backhanded slap was the usual way of admonishing inferiors, masters, backhanded slaves, husbands, wives, parents, children, men, women, and the Romans, Jews. We have here in today's gospel a set of unequal relationships, according to society, in which retaliation would be suicidal. If you remember in the movie 12 Years a Slave, there was a white enslaved person who answered back, it, they would say she got a little uppity. And by the time they finished whipping her, there was no flesh left on her back. So that's what we're dealing with. The only normal response would be cowering submission. Part of the confusion around the, surrounding me sayings is the failure to pay attention to whose who Jesus' audience was. In all of the examples, Jesus' listeners are not those who strike, who initiate lawsuits, who imposed forced labor, but their victims. If anybody strikes you, wants to sue you, forces you to go a mile, asks you for your code, blah, blah, blah. Jesus' audience are people who are used to being subjected to these very indignities. They're forced to stifle their outrage at their dehumanizing treatment by this hierarchical caste system of caste and class, of race and gender, of age, and status, and at that time of imperial occupation. So why then does Jesus counsel these already humiliated people to turn the other cheek? Because this action robs the oppressor of the power to humiliate. The person who turns the other cheek is in fact saying, try again. Your first blow failed to achieve its intended effect. I deny you the power to humiliate me. I am a human being just like you. Your status does not alter that fact. You cannot demean me. Such a response would create enormous difficulties for the striker, purely logistically. How could he hit the other cheek that's now turned to him? He can't backhand it with his right hand. You have to kind of, you like, can't do that. If he hits with a fist, he makes the other his equal, acknowledging him as a peer. But the point of the backhand is to reinforce institutional inequality. Even if the superior orders the 
person flogged for, you know, what the British would call cheeky behavior or uppity, we would say. This is certainly no way to avoid conflict. The point has been irrevoc irrevocably made. The superior has been given notice that this underling is in fact a human being. In that world of honor and shaming, he has been rendered impot impotent to instill shame in a subordinate. He has been stripped of his power to dehumanize the other. As Gandhi taught, the first principle of nonviolent action is that of non cooperation with everything humiliating. I frequently ask, what does this say to us today? Screaming in my head is Black Lives Matter. That clearly that is of the Lord. That is, and what does that say to me? It says, march with them, make scream and yell that their voting rights are being taken away. Donate to the people that you need to donate to. Get on the phone to your Congress people, your senators, whatever you have to do to stand up for your all people of color, it's not only African Americans, it's Pacific Asian Islanders, it's Jews, it's Hispanics, it's anyone who doesn't have societal power. We need to stand with them because we, the white who have the power, are less susceptible to the punishment that they, we need to give them our power and our privilege. And another one of the sayings that Jesus said today, that is actually what he said. That's the Aramaic. It's not only hard to learn to say, it's even harder to do. Love your enemies. I suggest that it relates to the other cheek in saying that it necessitates that we see this other person as an equal. It requires an internal willingness on our part to be willing to work out this relationship. Neil Douglas Klotz, whom you've heard me mention many times in regard to his work on the Aramaic words of Jesus says this. Now, his ex I'm just giving you this one excerpt. His, it's kind of esoteric. He says, in this statement, Jesus presents the mystical law of relationships. To get along with other people, find the rhythm that harmonizes with their own. Then bring them into harmony. Find within yourself that which fills their inner void and address that in them. The statement does not say anything about being nice to an enemy or letting that one walk over you. It reminds me, and Ken could speak more of this to this, but reminds me of like Roger in listening where you're feeding, but you're just trying to hear where the other person is coming from. Now, just the willingness to want to do that is the struggle for me. 
I heard a man on the news this week at a community school board meeting who got up and, and complained, and you hear this every year. When are we gonna have a white history month? When are we gonna have a week about men? When, you know, it's like, I, it's like, I just wanna go like, so what I find helps, I don't wanna say works, it helps. And if you know me, you're gonna hear the word Jesuit. It's a Jesuit spiritual practice in which you place yourself in God's presence along with this person that let's face it, you are judging. And you simply place yourself, the two of you, you imagine in God's presence together. And when I do this, to say it is humbling, is a vast understatement. It's like actually pretty mortifying because you experience God loves that person too. And it's like, what are you thinking, God? Like, like what? I can't believe, like, huh? But it's like, yeah, God loves them too. And what this leads me to realize about this week, about all these difficult sayings is that it's actually really talking about what kind of God our God is. God is love. God is merciful. God is forgiving. Every religious tradition acknowledges this. God is love, lover, and the beloved. Sounds like the Trinity to me. Namaste. The divinity in me salutes the divinity in you. The, our, is, our is, Islam brothers and sisters always begin Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin in the name of the one who is mercy and compassion. I suggest that if we experience ourselves as recipients of this mercy and compassion, if we experience ourselves in need of this mercy and compassion, then we will be more open to sharing the love, so to speak, to those, perhaps at first, whom we deem unworthy. As frequently happens, I found a meme on Facebook this week that spoke to me of this. And again, it speaks to who our God is. And this Rachel Held Evans says, this is what God's kingdom is like. A bunch of outcasts and oddballs gathered at a table, not because they are rich or worthy or good, but because they're hungry, because they said yes. And there is always room for more. Today's gospel invites us to consider that no one else is more worthy to be at that table than we are, and we are not more worthy than they. We are all there because of who our God is, and God wants us to invite everybody. Here endeth the sermon. <laughs> so it's your turn if you have anything to share. What a beautiful sermon as 
always, uh, Reverend Kathleen. And uh, the the, um, the last image of the, the table of oddballs uh, uh, that uh, Reverend Rachel uh, cited was is we're 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 hungry. That's why that's why we're at the table because we accepted an invitation. Um, and it's, it's such a shame she recently passed uh, the last couple of years too. Uh, young mom with uh, uh, with uh, with a husband, but um, yeah, it's you, uh, I never thought of the reason for the right cheek than the left cheek, but uh, that's that's something to ponder. Thank you so much. That's from Walter Wink in his book, Engaging the Powers. He's a scripture scholar. Yes, thank you, Kathleen. I, when I was reflecting on the readings this week, <clears throat> I was struck that last week was the Beatitudes and they kind of are the sayings that replace the Ten Commandments. And this week, Jesus tells us how to live the Beatitudes with that one word of forgiveness. And, and I agree with you, we, we need to stand with the various movements to protect the rights of people. But I also think we have to also be careful not to alienate people that don't believe as we do. And I think if there's something that's lacking in our country right now, it's respect. Respect for the other person's opinion. And because we don't have respect, we've allowed ourselves to be divided in half. And ultimately we're imploding as a country and as a society because we're turning in on ourselves when we can't honor and respect somebody else's opinion, even though it's different than ours, then we are not living the gospel for sure. So I, I think for me at least, as we're almost embarking on Lent, this word forgiveness is so very powerful. It's easy, as Jesus said, you know, maybe he would say, it's easy to love those who we love. It's easy to forgive those that we know. Can we forgive the people that really stand up against us and say that what we believe is false, that we're crazy? You know, I think one of the, one of the most powerful images of this independent, extraordinary Catholic movement is it calls people to take ownership of their own faith, their own relationship with God. If somebody joins an independent Catholic church, the expectation is you have a relationship with God already. We who are ordained for service are not here to give anybody an understanding of God you have your own understanding of God. We who are ordained for service are here to gather everyone around that table and let each person share their experience of God. Forgiveness and love go hand in hand and it's quite a challenge. I thank you, Kathleen, for your words today. Thank you, Ken. And the image in, in Aramaic that Neil expands on further is that of like a dance with the other person, that whatever they're doing, you kind of go along until you can do that in harmony, like together kind of, um, trying to see it from their point of view, where I know I find myself, especially nowadays, just that, you know, you hear a certain buzzwords and it's like, that person is not worth my breath. That's, that's within me. 
what has to change, you know, that's the call. Um, but it's very difficult. Anybody else before John leads us speak now? Or for I just want to say thank you, Kathleen, for a wonderful, beautiful, erudite, and <laughs> at the same time, just a uh, very human uh, a sermon, um, homily. And I don't really have anything to add because I don't think there's much to add. Um, I, I think you said it all, but but I think what you said also points to what some people are also saying is that when you said to be, we have to be attentive to things like Black Lives Matters and all of the things where justice, um, people's eyes need to be open to the injustices. Um, and, and you hear people say this, but it's so true that Black rights, civil rights, are, are are everyone's rights. It's not just black people lives or black people's rights that matter. We need to know that black lives do matter because it's obvious that that's not always so or respected in our society. But if we are not working for living for the rights of each group or any group, it, it's, it's, it affects rights for everyone. Because there's also a very slippery slope that once any group's rights are disavowed or not respected or not created, that the same can happen to <clears throat> anyone else. Um, and a lot of times people in the privileged group don't realize that, you know, that, that it could very easily be the other way or the way for anyone. Um, so to protect the rights, the justice for all is what is important and for any group. So um, I wanna thank you. And just one point that I always like to bring up when you talk about the left hand or the left uh, yeah. and, and the right and the cheek and all too is that some people don't know that it was very ingrained also in ancient society that anything that was of the left or done with the left was evil. In fact, the Latin word for left, which still remains in our vocabulary is sinister. Yeah. Sinister was, is the Latin for left. So it shows you how ingrained that idea of what is done with the left. And that's why people who were left-handed were seen as evil or, and those things down the line were trying to, you know, eradicate left-handedness in people because there was this uh, thought that there was somehow evil in it. So anyway. I, I was thinking too that people who are in what has become the normative of any category don't realize that they are normative. Like they don't realize, for example, when you study theology, okay, you study theology. And then there's feminist theology, mm. and there's mujerista, and there's black theology, and those are, yeah, but those are fringe mm. theologies. Mm. But the reality is that theology is white, Western, European male, Aquinas, Augustine, yeah. Dominic, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. There were all white Western European males that, males that had nothing to do with the other half of the human race. Most of what we know Aquinas, that is fun. Not Aquinas, Augustine. Augustine. <laughs> before yes. he changed. But Aquinas, like it didn't relate to half the human race. And yet 
when I was like five years old, I literally had to memorize what that guy thought in my catechism. Mm -hmm. And that, that's like the real thing. But if a woman or a black person or a Hispanic has an idea about God, well, but that's like fringe. Mm -hmm. It's like, no. And the history, right. history, is, history is written by the victors. Yes. So, you know, um, it's all of this work is internal, but you really, it requires that people be educated enough to confront their ideas and um, it's really scary. You know, they say, now we live in the age of information, but there doesn't appear to be any wisdom. It's like we know everything and, and look where it got us, you know, God help us. Okay. Well, let us join with our brothers and sisters around the world and profess this faith that we believe. John? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, <clears throat> begotten, not made, but one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit and became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. <clears throat> On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, that the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us confess our sins against, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on to those sins. John, <laughs> please lead the, the prayer people. The response to our prayers is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may be instruments of God's mercy and compassion by sharing with the forgiveness that we have received with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For forgiveness and healing in the church, that God will heal the wounds that have weakened the body of Christ and renew our spirits to further the mission of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive, that God will help us to forgive those who have injured us and to pray for them and their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For freedom of heart, that the Spirit will free us from returning evil for evil and instead guide us in confronting evil with love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been our enemies, whether politically, economically, or personally, that we may let go of hurts and grudges and seek a new understanding of them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer violence on city streets or in their homes, that they may rise above their wounds and be sources of hope and encouragement for others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For new eyes and hearts, 
that the Spirit will help us to recognize those in need as our sisters and brothers and give us the courage to respond to them as friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of racial and ethnic hatred, that all people may see the value and dignity of each person as a child of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are alienated from the church, that God will heal their hurts and help them to find welcome and acceptance in our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have experienced abuse, that God will heal their memories, their emotions, and their physical wounds so that they may be free to love and share life with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For all who are suffering, that God will free those unjustly held, bring justice to the oppressed, hope to those who are grieving, and healing to the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace that God will guide world leaders to end nuclear weapon proliferation and use their resources to end famine, disease, and oppression. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> and for what else shall we pray? I'd like for us to remember those on our prayer list, uh, and especially for our continued prayers for Gloria's friend, Annette, suffered a stroke. Um, for Jan's friend, Rena, she's having uh, medical procedures. And for Kathleen's daughter, Kristen, and her friend, Sarah, in your prayers for Traveling Mercies as they head to London next week. And a good friend of mine, Pat Therian, in the hospital for exploratory exams. For Jan's continued prayers, for Rena, her recovery, also Gloria, Gloria's for recovery as well. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for peace in our world, especially in the Ukraine. We pray that Putin will <clears throat> accept diplomatic uh, talks and will pull back from what appears to be a uh, war. That God will open his heart for this. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God. Oops, go ahead. For all those who suffer from uh, from various forms of mental illness, may they find understanding, may they find acceptance, uh, may they be recipients of our love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our prayer. Loving God, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And now gather those sins and let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace be of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now gather your bread and your wine. If you have them. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Bless Lord, you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks, thanks and, praise. and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, loving God, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power, God of power and might, heaven and earth, all full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died from us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. 
And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Francis, St. Clair, St. Therese, and Mary of Magdala and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep let us the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us together to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the love of Jesus draw you to him. May the power of Jesus strengthen you in his service. May the joy of our risen Lord fill your soul and may the blessing of our God who is mother, father, son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. All that we do begins here at the Eucharistic table. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
Just want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. Next week, I will be leading us in prayer at 5 p.m. Saturday, both live and also on Zoom. And I would just like to invite anybody who's thinking about coming to our wellness fair, Mind, Body, and Spirit, which is going to take place on May 14th, that if you are a vendor of anything that has to do with wellness, please get in touch with me so that we can talk to you about perhaps taking a table. Uh, the event will be outdoors. We are going to be providing tables and a tent and the rain date is May 21st. So we, it, it is our fundraiser. It's the only time of the year that we do fundraising for our parish to keep the parish going and also to be able to provide for the many different things that we do throughout the year, our food pantry, the toys for the children. And at times we even provide help to those who are in need. So we hope that everyone will join us um, and if you, there are any vendors out there, we are definitely looking for some vendors, so come and let me know. Please join us on Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. and on Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. when Reverend John Hayes run, leads us in mindful meditation. God bless and hope to see you next week. If you want, come by the church, 560 Old Bethpage Road in Plainview, or you could join us on Zoom. God bless and have a great week, everyone. Bye. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. 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 B